I want to talk about three things that you probably don't think are related, but actually are. Number one, the Superior Court of Fulton County, Georgia. Number two, the amount of young men flocking to religion. And number three, the last scene of the movie Fresh Kills. Let's talk about it. As you may have heard, the Superior Court of Fulton County, Georgia declared their six week abortion ban, otherwise known as the Life Act, unconstitutional. Now the decision itself is not what I wanna talk about. I want to talk specifically about a footnote in this case. Footnote number 21, let's read it. Quote, there is an uncomfortable and usually unspoken subtext of involuntary servitude swirling about this debate, symbolically illustrated by the composition of the legal teams in this case. It is generally men who promote and defend laws like the Life Act, the effect of which is to require only women to engage in compulsory labor. Karl Marx said once that religion is the opiate of the masses. Now, in a study I found called Opiate of the Masses, Inequality, Religion, and Political Ideology in the United States, uh, the researchers come to two conclusions. Number one, religion functions as a compensatory resource for lack of social and not just economic status. And number two, it provides traditional values-oriented schemas that, rather than just distracting people, shape their politics in accordance with the content of religious belief systems. Now, as to young men flocking to religion, that's the reason for the flocking. When you are a member of a religion, at least in the United States, how it functions is that your politics are shaped by that religious worldview. And I don't believe that young men have become increasingly spiritual than they were a generation ago. I think they're flocking to religion because religion provides the convenient framework that allows them to maintain their privilege. When this data came out a week or so ago showing that while young women were leaving the church, more young men were coming to the church. And specifically in America, Christianity is the church that we're talking about. People gave explanations as to why women are leaving. And the explanation they most often gave in all the think pieces was politics. And the major political issue that is responsible for this shift in religiosity among young men and women is abortion rights. There's a consensus that the faith divide is actually a political divide. Young women are realizing that it's precisely this Christian ideology that is leading to the stripping away of their rights. Because the entire premise for the subjugation of women, the entire premise for the idea that men are here and women are here, is religion. The creation story. God created Adam, then God created Eve from Adam's rib. Now actually there are two creation stories in the Bible. That's the one that most people remember. So the whole premise for the beginnings of this religion is that men are in charge of women. Women are the help mates, secondary to the men. Women are the other. And many passages from the New Testament just reinforce this. Women shall be silent in church. Um, women shall not teach or preach, you know, all of that stuff. If you have sex with a an unmarried virginal woman, you have to pay her dad instead of go to jail for the obvious crime of violating her body. You know, stuff like that. Whereas for the young men, that's precisely what attracts them to religion. Because men are obsessed with hierarchy. Masculinity is all about dominance. It's about an order of power. So Christianity just reinforces that order, that hierarchy. And the men are like, oh, I like this. This allows me to maintain my privilege. And what is that privilege? That privilege is entitlement. Entitlement to what, you may ask? Entitlement to the compliance of women. The belief that you are entitled to a woman who will submit to you. So trust us. We know what's best for you. You don't need to worry about this. You don't need to have rights or anything. Men are the providers and protectors. We will decide for you. Oh, no, no. We'll decide this for you, honey. Don't worry about it. Trust us, ladies. We know better. We'll protect you. No, you won't. And women are realizing this because your past behavior and history has shown us that you don't protect us that we are the least safe when we are in your presence. So women are waking up and realizing, hey, 
this Christianity stuff. This is the precise ideology that's responsible for this, that's responsible for men feeling they're entitled to this compliance. So we don't want nothing to do with that crap. We're conditioned to respect men. We have to live by laws we did not make that are made primarily by men for whom it's in their interest to force our compliance. What does this have to do with a mob movie, you ask? One of the last scenes in this film shows this precise dynamic. At the end, they're all sitting at the kitchen table, mom, dad, one of the daughters, and her niece. And the dad's trying to play this fun game that they used to play when they were kids, right? They would pretend they were in an airplane and the dad would say, you know, ready for takeoff. And he would say to his little girls, do you trust me to drive this plane? And after all the drama and all the violence and all the things that this father put his family through, his daughter, one of his daughters, who is now an adult, turns to him and says, no. I don't trust you. And that's what women collectively are saying. We don't trust you. Your presence in our lives makes us sicker, poorer, and puts us in more danger. You do not protect us. You put us at risk. You know, one of my mutuals, uh, Dex, he has a teenage daughter. And his teenage daughter said something interesting. She said, humans are the only species who mate with their natural predators. We are constantly expected to labor against our will, to comply in situations we did not choose. Women are expected to labor against their will. Christianity enforces it, and women are saying no. En masse, in the biggest numbers we've ever had in history, women are saying no. We don't trust you, and we will not Subscribe to a religion that insists that we defer to you and your judgment. Your track record shows that your judgment is horrible. Your judgment is never in our best interest. You do not keep us safe. Y'all, we have about a month until this election, November 5th. Make sure you're registered to vote. Make sure you know your polling place and buy or rent the movie Fresh Kills and watch it because it's amazing. See you later.